Aloha and welcome to this blustery afternoon in Hawaii. I'm real excited about presenting to you this module on coding standards because I think this is really one of the most important things you're going to learn in software engineering this semester. My objectives are for you to understand the motivation for using coding standards and to be able to write code that conforms to the standards that we are going to be providing in this class. That means not only writing new code that way, but um, if you are looking at other code, you can recognize when it's failing to observe the coding standards that, that we've uh, provided. And then finally, I'm hoping that you will um, begin to appreciate the support that technologies like CheckStyle and the Eclipse Formatter can provide for simplifying the task of making sure that your code is compliant. Coding standards are really important because if you write code that's formatted and looks a certain way and is named in certain ways, then when someone else is trying to work with you, they don't need the cognitive overhead of kind of parsing your style to understand the deeper meaning of your code because your style is similar to their style, assuming, of course, that you're on the same team or on the same project. It also means that if there's a big system that, that many people are working on, if they all obey the same coding standard, then the entire system has a consistent look and feel, which greatly aids in future maintenance. Um, I think that by far the best single reference for learning about coding style is called the Elements of Java Style. It codifies the best practices of the Java community. Um, it's fairly old, it's probably 10 years old by now, but you know, it, it still um, says for the most part exactly what you need to know and no one's come up with a better way of doing it. So I recommend and I've assigned that you read this book from start to end for this module. It's not very long, probably take you about an hour. It's itself very well written and, and enjoyable. I, I enjoy reading it, so um, I hope that you will too. The book is divided into a six or seven sections that overview general principles, formatting, naming, and so forth. I'm going to fly through some of the highlights from these sections. I'm going to go through it so quickly that, that obviously I don't expect you to kind of deeply assimilate the material just from this lecture. You're going to have to read the book. Even after having read the book, you're not going to have assimilated it. The only way to really assimilate this material is by practicing it, by writing code, and in particular looking at other people's code and looking for violations to see if it adheres to the style. So it's going to be an incremental process of of learning this coding standard. It's going to take you several weeks or even maybe most of the semester, particularly as we get into new areas of, of software engineering, you'll find new things you want to, you'll, you'll see like you know, design or testing and so forth. So it's, it's an incremental process and I'm just going to kind of really, eat, really quickly graze over the top of it in this particular lecture. So there's some general principles. Um, one of the most important is adhere to the style of the original. If you're working with a large pre-existing code base, then the most important thing is that you try to not write new code that differs dramatically from, from the old code, unless you've got the authority and willingness to go through the old code and, and rewrite it. You want to generally not say, oh, I'll document this later. I'm going to write junk code because I don't know if it's going to survive. Generally, just get in the habit of writing it correctly the first time. It doesn't take that much longer. And then if, uh, if it's the case that your code for some reason survives, you're, um, you're not going to be embarrassed by it. So there's a bunch of formatting conventions about indentation, breaking up long lines, and so forth. Most of these are going to be encapsulated into the, the, um, this formatting style file that you'll be given as part of this module that will enable you to just basically select a menu item in Eclipse and have it do all this layout for you. Um, naming conventions, Eclipse can't do that for you, but there are some conventions that you'll read about with respect to, um, you know, how you should name things, what the correct approach for naming um, classes versus methods and so forth, when you do capitalization, um, how you do package naming and so forth. All these things you should read about, and um, they are important for writing code that other Java developers can look at and, and understand easily. Okay, let's, so here's more and more naming conventions, um, na you know, how to name um, methods, how to write plural names, or if you're using collections, use plural names and, and so forth. 
Then there's conventions for how you do documentation. In Java, we have a really nice facility for generating the documentation called Javadoc. And there's a bunch of conventions that you should observe in order to both write comments that can be processed by the Javadoc tool, as well as um, how you write Javadoc, the, the actual Javadoc comments in such a way that the resulting documentation makes sense when you're viewing it in an HTML format as opposed to the code. Um, essentially, you want to write you want to write Javadoc such that they make sense and are useful when you're looking directly at the code, as well as making sense and being useful when you're looking at the HTML documentation that generally doesn't include the, the code. And here's a bunch of you know things associated with that. Um, again, I'm not going to go into detail, take a long time, and really you should just be reading through this. One of the things I want to um, uh, change from the, the elements of Java style is they recommend that you wrap keywords with the code tag. And I don't like this convention because then when you're, it, it clutters up the presentation of the, of the keywords. And, um, and when you're looking at the, the Java docs in line with the source code, it makes it harder to understand. I don't think it adds enough value in the produced HTML documentation. So I recommend that, that on balance, it's better to not use these um, code tags. However, if you are writing code in your Java docs, you know, showing example invocations of the, of the class or methods, then you know, definitely you want to wrap them with the pre-tag. Okay, and then there's a bunch of things about how you write summary descriptions and so forth. Um, they do, num number 74 is about um, enumerations and that um, that recommendation is no longer valid because this because elements of Java style was written prior to the introduction of the enum class, so you don't have to do that anymore. Um, there's programming conventions around the use of e the double equal sign, um, wildcards, and import uh, using unchecked versus checked exceptions. We'll get to that a little later in the class. It's a very important distinction. Um, packaging conventions. Uh, you know, how you create packages, how you uh, encapsulate code together in a package, the good things to read about in the book. Finally, I want to get to check style, which is an automated tool we'll be um, bringing up, presenting pretty close, pretty soon in the class, which automates checking for a lot of these kinds of coding standards. Um, and the Eclipse source format or another tool, which you can start using right away, um, that enables you to essentially format any existing code according to most of the conventions that we're talking about here and, um, and eliminate you know, many of the problems. Now, there's one important caveat about the use of the source formatter. This is a feature I don't really like so much. You, when you've got a source formatter enabled, it's going to automatically insert um, Javadoc comments with, with you know, kind of stub comments. Um, that are not helpful for actually understanding what the, the code does, but it's supposed to be, you know, template text that you replace with a specific, you know, documentation of interest. The problem is when you have that stub text, then check style will not flag an error if that, um, if that Javadoc comment has not been written. So in some sense, I think it's actually worse than, than not having it at all, because now your check style um, won't show you where in your classes you haven't supplied appropriate documentation. But it's just a trade-off, so I want you to be sure that you don't submit code where you've just left the default stub documentation templates in there. That's definitely going to irritate future readers of, of your code. Now in addition to the coding standards in the Elements of Java style, there are a bunch of other coding standards that we're going to be adopting in this class. And I have a special page you can go to. The link is supplied in the, um, you know, in the coding standards page, which provides these supplemental um, coding standards beyond which you'll see in elements of Java style. So definitely go there as well to, um, to check it out. Thanks a lot for listening. See you soon.